Welcome to Aggregate, an open source Python package for solving actuarial problems with aggregate probability distributions. And in today's session, we're going to continue our discussion of distortion functions and spectral risk measures. And we're going to talk about the idea of a bid price and an ask price for a contract. We're going to go back to the simple binary risks that we introduced in the first talk. Uh, that was a contract on the high temperature in a given day in Central Park. We considered a contract which paid one if that high temperature was above 28 degrees um, centigrade. And that contract had a loss cost of about 10% and we set up a pricing model uh, which uh, corresponded to a price of, of 30 cents for that risk. Um, and we actually used a distortion function, this orange function here that goes from 0, 0 to 1, 1, increasing concave function that priced a whole slew of these contracts with different strike prices characterized by their probability of loss. Now, what I want to do now is to consider um, bid and ask prices and introduce the idea of motivation um, into these uh, uh, contracts. So we described the Central Park uh, contract as we had underwriters available and willing to quote that. So we were thinking of an inbound call um, and we were being asked for our price and we were providing what is then called the, the ask price. That's the price we would be willing to uh, sell at. And we wanted a positive margin in that because we were concerned about adverse selection, people with better models than us, the usual sort of slew of concerns that, uh, that underwriters have. What we didn't talk about was how we would finance the capital that we needed uh, to write that risk. So remember, it's a fully collateralized uh, layer of $1. Um, and we're getting 30 cents of premium, so we needed 70 cents of capital. Well, one way that we could do that would be we've, uh, we could try and find someone who might be willing to buy an insurance product off us that paid a dollar if the high temperature was actually below 28 degrees. Because if we could do that, um, and if that person was willing to pay 70 cents or more for us, we would have fully uh, collateralized our dollar, we would have had 30 cents from the person who did the inbound call, we would call out to somebody else and get at least 70 cents, that would give us at least a dollar. At the end of the period, we, the temperature is either going to be above or below uh, 28 degrees, uh, we'll deal with if it's equal to 28, we contractually decide uh, who gets it. Um, and, and so any amount that we could collect greater than 70 cents would be pure arbitrage profit for us. And so the lowest bid price that we would accept for the sort of complementary below 28 degree contract would be um, 70, uh, 70 cents. And notice here, um, we've sort of switched hats. So the inbound call comes to an underwriter who is skeptical of the uh, buyer. They think the buyer might have some knowledge that they, they don't have. They're concerned about being selected against. When we're looking to sell, we're making the call out. So we can pre-screen who we're calling to. We're not worried about being selected against because we're calling, uh, we're calling them. Now notice that when we talk about um, these two contracts, so the above 28 degrees and the below 28 degree contract, um, the below 28 degree contract has a value equal to one minus the above 28 degree contract. So what we're really talking about here is selling a contract or selling minus the contract. The one, the value of one is always going to be one. Um, so we, we're in a situation where essentially if we can write a contract uh, X and we can also write a contract minus X, then there's no residual risk. And we're normally thinking that the first X we would have been written on an inbound call. So it's written at our ask price. And then what we're thinking of is, okay, from a financing perspective, if I can arrange to sell minus X, which I'm going to do on somebody else's bid through an outbound call to another market, then by no arbitrage, if our risk measure is normalized, which means that the, the value of zero is zero, then the proceeds from those two transactions has to be uh, zero, right? And so we're going to have the proceeds are going to be the ask on X plus the bid on minus x that has to add up to zero and therefore if we just swap the meaning x to x for minus x we get this expression for the bid on a contract x is equal to minus the ask on minus x now there's a bit of a brain teaser 
Um, and I prefer to think of it in terms of the um, the weather uh, derivative uh, way with the with the one. It kind of makes it simpler that everything's positive. But this is a fundamental uh, relationship that holds uh, between bid and ask prices. Now, um, there's one aspect here that we haven't uh, talked about particularly, and that is that we want our um, these these pricing functionals, these spectral risk measures, they're de determined by the distri distribution function of the underlying random variable. And that means they're what's called law invariant. They, on, they only depend on the distribution function because they're a function of the distribution function. And so we can start to sort of build these up by relating them to what are called indicator functions on a uniform random variable. So the indicator function we tend to write as, as something like this, where we'll, we'll put one u less than s. And what that means is it's a function on the um, sample space that your random variable is determined on, which is usually denoted capital uh, omega, but takes the value one on the set of omega where u is less than s, and it takes the value zero otherwise. So when we say there's a probability 10% that our loss is, or that our temperature is greater than 28 degrees, that will correspond to some collection of uh, omega in our sample space, and our contract is then the indicator function that takes the value one on those uh, values. Now notice here that um, our uh, uh, complementary product that the pays one when the temperature is less than 28 degrees. So that's one minus the contract that pays one when the temperature is above 28 degrees. That is the indicator function on u is greater than s because either u is less than s or greater than s. And that that then has the same distribution as uh, an indicator function on one u less than one minus s because um, the probability that this um, uh, one is one u greater than s, it takes the value one is one minus s because it's the, the complement. And so it's uh, we can sort of switch it around here to get uh, one u less than one minus s. Our distortion we've essentially defined as the ask price for a risk with probability s, which we can think of as one u less than s for some uniform variable. And again, it doesn't matter which uniform variable because it's law invariant, they're all going to be the same. It's only determined by the distribution function. Now let's define a new function, which I'm going to call g check or g dual s, and that's going to be equal to the bid price for the same contract. Okay, now thus far we haven't mentioned the bid price for the same contract, we've mentioned the bid price for the sort of complementary residual uh, product. So now, going back to the, the temperatures again, if we're thinking that we've written the greater than 28 degree contract on the ask, if we can sell the complementary product, which is one minus S X on the bid, then the total payoff is gonna be one with certainty um, in, in the sense that at the end of the period, we have to pay one. And so if we can collect one now, we're, we're free and free and clear. So that's the sort of no arbitrage profit. It's going to be worth one. So therefore, one is going to equal the ask for the above plus the bid for the residual. And remember, the bid for the residual, the probability that the residual takes the value one is one minus s. So that that's going to not be g check of s, it's going to be g check of one minus s. And therefore, the jewel, the price of the jewel is going to equal uh, the price of the jewel at S is going to equal 1 minus G of 1 minus S. I'm swapping the meaning of S and uh, 1 minus S there. And so um, that gives us a, a definition of uh, G check equal to the bid price for, for 1 minus S. If we've got G, we can, so we've got all the ask prices, uh, we can compute um, the bid prices. So let's see what that uh, looks like. Um, we can uh, plot that out. So remember here, we've got our orange line was our ask price. So this is our G of S function. Um, so at say 0.3 here, uh, we've got a price of about a half. Um, our residual then one minus G of S, S, that's the amount of capital we have to raise. And um, the residual has a probability of 0.7 of paying, okay? And so the ask price on the residual is gonna be G check at 0.7, one minus uh, S. So this uh, height here is going to equal this height here. And you can see exactly how you sort of relate the two curves. So the orange curve is the ask price. The green curve is the bid price. What you're doing is you're doing one minus S to sort of do a mirror image here. 
and then you're doing one minus g of s to do a mirror image here. So this this um, amount here is our, our bid price on this contract kind of switches down to that. So what's the sort of significance of all of this? Um, this is maybe slightly unusual from, a, from an insurance perspective to talk about bid and ask prices and so forth. Really, it's, it's about motivation and it's about uh, whether you're selling a, a product as part of your primary insurance business through your underwriters where you expect a positive margin and you're going to do that on your ask price or whether this is part of financing um, which is going to be handled typically by a different part of the organization because you want to keep your underwriters focused on, on making a, an underwriting profit but they're thinking that they're buying a security or, or selling a security in order to hedge the underlying risk that you've got. And you see that, of course, in reinsurance. When you buy reinsurance, you're not buying it to make money. I mean, if you can, you, you would, but typically there's going to be some positive margin associated with that. And that's going to be analogous here. You're, you're really buying the reinsurance uh, on the bid, which means um, you're going to get less loss recoveries than the premium uh, that you're paying, just as on, on the example here. Um, this residual has got an actuarial value of about 0.7, uh, but you're going to accept only 0.5 for it. So these topics are discussed further in Chapter 10 of the book, Pricing Insurance Risk, and I'd uh, refer you to that for more details. Thank you.